everybody. Welcome to the Cinema Junkies Live. We are here on episode numero dos, that number two, with our guest, Leslie. How are you today? Good, good. Thank All you right. for having me. Of I'm course, super of excited. Course. Yeah, this is amazing. Episode two, we are here live at HQ. We also got our producer staff on the mixer today. What's up, Zach? <laughs> oh, what's hello. going on Cash? i guess i'll turn my mic on there you mm. go there you go zach in the house cash how cash, you doing yo yo what's good what's up all my peoples and we also have a live audience again today we got uh let's see we got david in the house we got mason we got josh what's up guys how you doing all right welcome everybody i see you guys in chat as well welcome welcome we have leslie and you said it was louvet 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 i know it's a little complicated is that french it's French. It's French. It really? wow. It's not Cuban. Yeah. I love it. But it is a very interesting. It's a conversation starter at the very least, right? So we actually met, uh, we did a short film TV series. It was a pilot. It was a pilot yeah, TV a series. Pilot. And uh, we met for the first time. Obviously, we had the camera crew on there on there as well and it was a blast yeah, so was junkies on set. Junkies, yeah, on, junkies set. Were on set. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for having us. Um, so actually, I know your background is actually kind of in the acting world. Is that correct? Yeah, it so is. you were directing that pilot. Mm -hmm. What kind of led you up to that point? What got you into acting? Tell us the uh, the origin story. So I was in high, no, it was like middle school. I was getting in a lot of trouble and I went to this, I ended up in drama class. Um, I, I'll never forget her name. I think it was Mrs. Porter. And um, I was just like, uh, I was like such a bad kid. Like I was a terrible teenager. I did the craziest shit. Like I ended up in jail when I was like 19 years old, but we'll probably get to that later. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I was in there. Yeah. So, I mean, so then I, I ended up in this drama class and I was like uh, eighth grade and it was seventh grade and miss porter just i was like ugh, i was like failing the class i hated it and then one day she she comes up to me and she's like hey um act she gave me like a scenario and she's like act like you're a mental patient and, and mental facility whatever gave me like a scene yeah and um at first she asked the whole class and nobody wanted to do it and i was like you know what i'll do it i put, I put my hand up like, i'll do it <laughs> so miss porter's like okay well this is the scene you gotta act like you're crazy in mental facility and then she gave this other role of the nurse to this other girl janine janine mason and um i remember like the scene started and she's like action and i was like i killed it and i was like oh i have to be an actor this is what I got to do, you know? That's so that's when I kind of, it got it like imprinted in me. It started. And I always loved films since I was a kid. My family, all we did was watch movies. I mean, we're talking about like old films like Poltergeist, Jaws. Um, my dad had me watch The Exorcist when I was like six. No We were like, mercy. yeah, that was like our family tradition. Like, let's all, we come from <laughs> Cuba. And we're like, let's watch movies. Like we were like fascinated by the film industry. Like my mom and dad always loved watching movies on the weekend. So that's all we did. We watched these iconic filmmakers and that's how I kind of loved filmmaking since I was a kid. And my mom and dad, they just loved watching. And it just, since I was a kid, I was just like learning and learning. And finally I hit drama class and I was like, I have to do this. And then I got into like a shit ton of trouble and I was like, whatever, forget that. And then one day, um, I was like 19, I went to jail and I had gone for like 10 days. I got a DUI, I was in a lot of trouble and I was like, how can I change my life? So I enrolled into film school and it was like, it was over. I went to film school, I learned how to make movies and that's what I, I just, I kind of like decided that I would study for four years. I studied acting, I studied filmmaking and then I like, that was history. That's awesome. Uh I'm glad you're not currently still in jail. That's amazing. Yeah, I know, uh, right? I could have been. <laughs> yeah. It was a really bad thing. It was a bad case. I could have been there for a couple years. I think we learn the most, though, in those times of struggle and, and really just find a lot about ourselves. So yeah. I'm sure a lot you draw a lot of those you know bad, hard times and bad times into the stories that you act and in, into, into the stories that you write as of well. Of course. Because um, if you never lived life, it'd be kind of hard to portray somebody that has, right? Yeah. Would yeah. you say <clears throat> filmmaking or acting saved or kind of miss miss oh hell yeah it totally changed my life i would say like it gave me a purpose it gave me a reason um i remember the first day i was in jail um i come from a good family so i 
like they didn't teach me to do anything like to be a criminal it was yeah it was just like i was so lost i didn't know what i was gonna do i i had no purpose i didn't know what, what life was about i was like i was like what am i doing here and um when i went to jail that first day i looked around and i was like oh shit i was like this is not me I was like, I have to, I have to, you know, flip it, right? And then being there, I most people would kind of be a little bit, I don't know, like I never was embarrassed to talk about it. I never, I never been embarrassed to talk about the past because I feel like that kind of molded me into who I am today. Absolutely. So I feel like everyone that has gone through like a hardship or anything, they should definitely talk about it, other than repress it, because you know, you don't know who you can be reaching out to that has the same kind of struggle that they're yeah. going through when you kind of change their lives. I agree. I definitely agree with that. So thank you for sharing that. And everyone else that is out there watching. Yeah. I mean, you never know who just needs to hear that they're not alone exactly. right? yeah. in, the, in the process. Um, when you got into film school and you started that process, because obviously that's when you really started to dive into the to the behind the camera world. What, did you find yourself automatically loving the filmmaking side more than acting or did you grow into it or do you love them both the same? Um, I got into filmmaking in Miami, which was just like not, it was not like the scene. Yeah. So at the time they had 35 millimeter cameras and it was like not digital, even though like we were moving into a digital world. And I was just like, what are we going to do with these 35 millimeter cameras? Like, I was like, this is confusing. So it, it took a lot to, it was different. It's like, I got into film school and it was kind of like, you had to make the movie by yourself. <laughs> As opposed to like having a crew. Yeah. So honestly, I hated it. I was like, fuck this shit. It was so much work. And then when you like, you know, when you talk about our pilot where everyone comes together and we do it together, it's different as opposed to you yeah. doing it by yourself. Absolutely. I feel like yeah. some of the greatest filmmakers in the world, they're collaborators. Mm -hmm. They're not like doing it by themselves. Yeah. They know how to collaborate. They know how to collaborate with their DP, with their sound guy, with their camera guys. And they actually enjoy that. They don't work alone. And I feel like some of the worst filmmakers are people that work alone and don't know how to collaborate mm -hmm. because this is this is the industry of collaboration. It takes a village, but then also you never know when there may be like holes in the game, right? Like, for example, yeah, you may be amazing at creating pretty pictures as a DP or directing people as a director, but you may not know something about this 500 pound piece of equipment that we're swinging around that we could tell you, hey, this is safe, this isn't safe, but also we can get you this different angle of the shot or whatever it may be so i think listening to obviously the quali qualified professionals yeah. in their departments but mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's like you know why would you want to experience that alone of like course. like i love at the end of those long days we're you know hugging each other and man we got through this because yeah. there's ups and downs along the process yeah there is there is and i think that just trusting your team and trusting that they know what they're doing, letting them do what they do is one of the most important things you can do as a filmmaker. I agree. And I think some of the greatest filmmakers in the world, like if you take a look at like Quentin Tarantino, Scorsese, they work with the same people. Yeah. I mean, that's almost like the magical formula is that they find their people and that's who they move with for the rest of their careers. Yeah. They already know what you're thinking before you can ask exactly. them to do it. You it's know? synergy. Yeah. Yeah, it's synergy and it's We've been also speaking about synergy a lot on this show. Just yeah. in day to day life. But yeah. Definitely. I feel like it's so important and it's kind of one of those things where it's like if it's not on set and it's not present, it's gonna be a rough day. You're gonna have a hard time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um that's I mean that's why we pretty much do what we do and built the junkies is because hey, we want to build that family, to build that really solid crew. And uh, it's been amazing for sure. Now, we talk a lot about working with the same people and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Do you still work with people that you've worked with since day one or um, have they moved on to bigger and better things or different different ways of life? Like what's kind of your crew then versus now? I still still work with people from college. I stay in touch. Um, there's, there's like, I wouldn't say as far as crew goes since I, kind of like focused on acting as an actor you're kind of an asset to a project as opposed to like being a filmmaker where you're now creating the project so it's like I've worked with a few people that I would say are still in my life um, especially a writer friend of mine he's he's super amazing he's actually an older person and I've worked with him for like six years we write together and that's one of the people that I'm definitely not gonna ever stop working with so I would say there's about a, a good handful of people and obviously you guys, duh, 
Hello. Uh, <laughs> duh. duh. <laughs> no, I, I love that. But um, so what what's changed for you the most over the years, would you say? Whether it's in the process and the way your style, um, the industry, how's the industry changed outside of just going from film to digital? I feel like, well, you know, the, how does the industry has changed a lot. <laughs> They're making, I feel like the industry's like making things <sighs> It's a tough subject, right? Because when you think about the industry, you think about the golden days, it's like some of the greatest filmmaking in the world. You know, you got Hitchcock's legend. And you got these people now that are like, it's like, I mean, it's cool because you have a lot of projects, you have a lot of opportunities, but it's like, are we shying away from like actual filmmaking and mm. the way it's actually done just to make something? It's like, I don't know, because like old Hollywood was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was like beautiful and it was so different than what it is now. You know, it's like, is it for the better or is it for the worse? I think that the attention is shift, though, because more people consume 15 second videos nowadays than they do, you know, hour long pieces of content for the most part. I mean, I think that. Yeah. But is it is it a change of the industry? Is it the change of the technology, the people or the attention span or the style i think it has a little bit to do with the industry and the technology because i feel like you know the attention spam it's kind of like you acclimate to what is being you acclimate to the times mm -hmm. i feel like especially us as creatures is like we acclimate to the times like you know the pandemic who can who would could have thought we were going to survive that but we yeah. all acclimated perfectly fine it's what we do you know we acclimate so it's like now you got TikTok, you got instagram People are just acclimating to it. So it's kind of like, as far as for me, I I like old Hollywood better. I don't think there was as many opportunities as there used to be, but I like old Hollywood better. Okay, interesting. Well, speaking of old Hollywood, we're going to pull up some frames here in a second uh, and see if you can guess them. Some from older Hollywood, some from newer Hollywood. Okay. And so we will be pulling that up in just a second. But do you have a favorite Okay, so you talk about like old Hollywood. What's your favorite thing about it, though? Was it, was it the the nostalgia? Was it the pictures? Was it the, um, you know, I mean, look, I, I I like the opportunities are are being um, provided for a lot of people. Yeah. So I'm not gonna like. I think obviously now we have way more opportunities, and there's way more equal pay. But as far as the filmmaking goes, I think obviously it was better back then. Mm. I, I'm, I'm just talking about the filmmaking. I'm not talking gotcha. about what actually has been done because yeah. it's been progressive. So there's been a lot of opportunities for women. There's been a lot of opportunities for people of color, all of that. That's great. I'm talking about more of like the technical part, like the filmmaking part. I would say obviously film is amazing. Yeah. You know, film is just like one of the greatest things in the world. <laughs> and digital, it's not like digital is not amazing. But it's like it's film yeah. is beautiful and it's an art piece and it's way more complicated and way more abstract to like understand. But I feel like we've lost a little bit of the quality. Is it only because film like digital can be done so much easier and more quantity instead of like film, you'd have to process it, develop. Right. And it, you couldn't go back and look at the clips. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they had playback. I don't. No, there is no. Right, playback. there's no playback. Yeah. So we have to make sure we get it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like it has a lot to do with um, the aesthetics of the work, right? So it's like back in the day, you better get it. Yeah. Now it's like you know, uh. it doesn't matter because we can do it 20 more times. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like maybe it's the ethical point in it where it's like, yeah, back then it's like you better get this. Yeah. You better. You don't. You don't have. 20 takes yeah. now it's like you have all the time in the world and we get a little lazy too because we're like oh we could do that again or whatever you know but it's like but also if you look at like a film like even the 90s like i was watching this movie terrifier my friend brought me to it and i was like i was like this movie was crazy it was so gory but actually the way they shot it it was like an 80s vibe and the color, it looked like they shot on film. Mm. I was like, that looks cool. And it just, it's about the nostalgia of it. I think that I, I'm drawn to that. Yeah. You know, feeling like I'm, I'm in a 90s movie. I, I love the 90s. 90s had great cinema. 
Well, I mean, it has to have some some sort of nostalgia yeah, for you, uh, <laughs> some some sort of nostalgia for you, because again, you you explained earlier in the podcast, like you grew up with it, so it has to subconsciously or consciously remind you of mm -hmm. family and good times and stuff mm -hmm. like that. All right, I think we're moving on to our guess that frame sequence. Okay. So guess we're... that frame. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So do I have to guess the movie? Yes. Okay. And if you want to try to explain more details about it, you can. Like, hey, I know they shot it at this location or this camera, or whatever. You feel free. But yeah, okay. we're just going based off Yo, of what movie it is. But real quick, I just do want to highlight who we have in the building. Leslie. <laughs> we have your IMDb up. Not but, sure if we showcased it earlier, but here it is for the people watching. Yeah. And if we can actually post her Instagram and IMDb in the chat so that everybody that's watching uh, both live and not live can definitely check her out because she's Awesome. Amazing yeah. actress, yeah. writer, director. Her Instagram is in the description. Yep. I will add the IMDb link as well. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Beautiful. So right. on to. Take it over. Guess that frame. Ba -ba -ba -bum. You ready, Leslie? Yeah, let's do it. God, I'm nervous for this. <laughs> I like to make it easy and work my way up. Zach wants to just shoot from the back court. So. Oh, God. So Can we start off easy? We're going to go start off easy. Okay. Fine. All right. Here's... I'm competitive. I'm competitive. All right. All right. Here's frame number one. You looking? You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, duh. Uh, Christian Bale. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh. Fuck. I oh know this movie. God. No, I. Oh. American Psycho. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. I don't check. Okay. Make sure. Next one. Okay. Frame two. Oh, well, duh. Um, Black Panther. <sighs> okay. We're going okay. easy. Baby steps. Yeah. Next frame. Oh, damn. I haven't watched this one, but that's. um. I don't know. I don't know this one. Uh, so this one is the Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, I saw that movie. Yeah. What the fuck? One of my favorite movies <laughs> oh, of God. all time. Oh, God. Got her. Such okay, beautiful you got her. focus right, on those lights. Yeah. Beautiful. Was beautiful that Wes imagery. Anderson? Yes. Wes Anderson. Mm hmm but Have you seen his recent movie? His um, recent movie I saw and I didn't like it. It's it was, just ridiculous. Was, That's why I love it. It was just too out there. And I forgot the name too. So if you put it up here, I swear to God, I'm going to be pissed. I did not. I only did okay. one Wes Anderson movie for you. All right. Next frame. What the fuck? This is like. <laughs> I told you it's going to get more difficult. I can't even see this actress's face. Perfect. That's what we wanted. I'm going to just, I don't Think know. Think about it. It. I mean, it's Where's in she a, at? She's in a psych ward. Oh, who's that in the shadows? Is that Michael Myers? Uh, no, psych. Someone. Ward. Some some killer. Not a killer. Mm. Psych ward. Yeah. Is this? Oldie. This can't be Silence of the Lambs. Oldie. This is from the early nineties. Psych ward. That she happens to escape from. With. Oh, is this the Halle Berry movie? No. <laughs> is it? No? So <laughs> no. this is Terminator 2. Judgment oh, what the Day. fuck? I didn't yeah. watch that movie. Oh, really? Oh, I my hate God. Terminator movies. Terminator 2 Judgment Day is one of the best <laughs> yes, movies. Yes, this of is all one time. of the best movies. I, can't uh, I don't like those action movies. I probably watched this movie a hundred times from the age of <laughs> yes. four to now. And I would constantly reenact and recreate the, like, on my own, I'd go outside and I'd drop the flowers you remember when he has the box of flowers with the shotgun yes. inside i would yes. go outside and i'd drop flowers and i'd step on that was them. at the school wasn't it um that was at the mall but yeah. either way leslie has not seen the movie i haven't seen this movie i don't so. like terminator i'm not an arnold schwarzenegger fan Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> look if you i was watching a, a video the other day of people comparing um the rock who is like a newer big muscle guy and Arnold Schwarzenegger and their acting abilities. And just Arnold Schwarzenegger is so much better than The Rock. And I'm just John not even a Cena fan of The Rock. I don't, yeah, know. That's fine. No, Arnold, that's fine. I don't know about that. I just I'm an actor. I like The Rock. I like The Rock. When I think about acting, I'm like, I guess for the superhero aspect of it, they look, they fit the part. But anyways, yeah, I haven't seen Terminators. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. All right. Next one. Oh, God. This is crazy. <laughs> Think about it. Where? What do you see? A basketball player playing uh -huh. basketball. Boom. Is this a new LeBron movie? 
<laughs> Space Jam. This uh-huh. No, this is the Michael Jordan movie. No. no. What the fuck is this? I have probably haven't seen this either. Josh threw this one in here for us. Yeah. Uh, great curveball. Uh, or what was it, Josh? Or Cash? Oh. Yeah. Love him basketball. I didn't watch that either. Love him basketball. Come on. That's a classic. That is a classic, but I haven't. That was with Queen Latifah, right? Was that not Queen um, Latifah? I'm not sure. Who, who's it? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Damn, you guys really trying me right now. Yeah. <laughs> I warned you. Even before we started the show, I was like, it's coming. Okay, let's see what's going on. Yep. Well, I got two. <laughs> Hopefully, I get the last one. That, I think that was, that was all of them. That was all of them? You, I can give you one more. Okay, I got, well, I got two. It's not that bad. That is true. Give I think, me the yeah. terrifying. <laughs> There's terrible. Yeah, yeah. We, we no, cheat. that's good. That's good. I'm good. I don't need to get any more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Beautiful. So we're going to move right along here. Um, so the viewers have definitely gotten to know you a little bit now. We're going to move on to our Settle and Guest deep dive here. Um, what do you feel is a common myth about your job or field of expertise? And this is kind of interesting because you kind of play, like I said, both sides of, of the camera. So th- let's talk about that. Yeah. What is a common myth about actors or actresses that also get behind you have to sleep to get the part (laughs) oh like sleep around you mean you gotta sleep around to get the part got you yeah okay that's a common myth or you gotta sleep to get the movie you know yeah that's what they say and luckily like you said earlier uh the industry's definitely gotten more progressive over the years yeah and and obviously you being a woman and Mm -hmm. someone that is uh, a minority as well what's some of the challenges that you've come across and how has that also changed over the years for you? I mean, I wouldn't say that that's a myth because I feel like it's partially true. Yeah. Not, 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 I'm not saying that yeah. is a myth, but I'm saying, um, because that is, true. I mean, that's happened to me. I've gotten hit on on set, you yeah. know? So it's like, and by a huge director, which I'm not going to tell you, but yeah, I mean, it's happened and I don't think it like, I feel like it now people are understanding that that's happening. But I feel like as far as it goes, it's still happening. I feel like, you know, people get into a position of power and they want to do what they want to do. Yeah. I feel like now people are just becoming aware of it, which is good. But for example, that Marilyn Monroe movie that came out, you know, I feel like that was kind of a spotlight on Hollywood. Although I really hate that they used her life because she was so much more than that. But am I skeptical that that happened to her? I don't think so. Yeah. You know, I feel like it's probably more common than uncommon. I mean, I personally have talked to multiple women in the industry and they said, you know, one of them was like, I worked with one of my, you know, a director that I really looked up to and then he was hitting on me and now I lost all respect for him. So it happens all the time and it happens to guys, too, which is crazy. (laughs) Whoa. It happens to guys, too. Like I've I've heard like guys getting hit on by other guys and it's it's insane actually i had a show called this is life where i shot it it was really low budget it's an anthology every episode follows the story of a different character and one of the characters in that story he gets approached by a guy and this is all my friends that were like sure use my story i want to you know i want to talk about it it's it's really cool and it feels like very gritty very like you know it's um handheld most of it But he has this manager who was a big deal. And at the time he was really, this guy was really big, really bulky, uh, great body. And, you know, the manager was kind of like, like suck my dick or whatever. (laughs) If you, you know, if you want it. A lot of people don't talk about that, but you know, they talk about women because it's almost embarrassing for a guy to have to deal with that. I think it's probably much more embarrassing because it's so common in the world of women it's supposedly not that common in the world of men but i think it's actually more common and it's just not being talked about because of the embarrassment of it all sadly it seems like women are just used to walking down the street getting catcalled and they're like it's just another day exactly exactly yeah that, that that is crazy to think about though too um but yeah i think you know at the end of the day just keep on fighting for the injustices and keep keep on fighting for you know, everyone's right yeah. to a safe, safe place to work, you know, whether that's through uh, those types of instances or, you know, 
anything really. Exactly. Uh, I think yeah. the cool thing about the junkies too is, <clears throat> we don't we don't care about any of that. You know. I feel like yeah. I feel like you guys are probably one of the first people that I worked with where I felt, well, first of all, that's one of the reasons why I became a director is because I wanted a safe environment for everybody that I ever hired. And um, that's when I met you guys, I was like, oh yeah, these guys, all they want to do is make movies, make television. Like that's all, and that's all I care about. So I was like, yes, they're dope. Like anything in the future for me like obviously i'm gonna give you guys a call you know because it's like that's all i ever wanted it's like i just want to feel like i'm having a good time doing what i love and i don't have to worry that any of my women are getting hit on or men are getting you know bombarded and we're just making movies yeah that's all that that showed on um that tv pilot that we did too that mm-hmm. was uh, <clears throat> probably one of our better projects too we just came to came to work yeah and that's 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 all we came to do, and that's kind of what everyone did. Yeah. And the show was amazing. It's dope, and we had a great time. Yeah. So if we have a million, that's going to be even a better time. It's like <laughs> we don't got to stress, you know? Yeah. Let's go. Let's get it sold. Let's go, yeah. you know? Let's do it. I love it. Let's start a petition so that everyone in chat can uh, can sign it and send it in. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, it, yeah. Whenever it gets released, y'all go tune in to Broken, yeah. the TV pilot. Um, run those numbers up. Yeah, let's run go. that shit yeah. up. Yeah. Run let's it go. up. I what are you it. studios by it? Yeah, great answer so far. Thank you so much for uh, all your insight and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, what do you think is the most important lesson you've learned over your career? Oh, wow, that's a good question. I have to say, um, probably talking less is more. Mm. I had to learn that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like... No, you haven't learned it yet. Sorry. I, okay, I have to learn that Yes, one. he's still learning. Uh, still learning. <laughs> Talking less is more, I would say. What what made you kind of feel that way? Was there just something that you kind of... Yeah, what are you you specifying? Uh, Well, I just mean like, you know, when you do movies and whatever, you get interviewed and they ask you all these questions, whatever, Mm. and they get into your personal life, your political views or your past or whatever, and it's just kind of like, at the end of the day, it's like we don't all agree on everything. And living now in the world of like the internet, you get kind of boxed if you say the wrong thing and at the end of the i'm just here to make movies i'm just here to create art yeah that's it nothing else so what i did 10 years ago doesn't affect my art it's am i giving you good artwork or am i not giving you good artwork yeah so that's all that i care about i don't care about anything else now if i was like killing babies or doing some crazy shit obviously you know that's you're crazy and that's different but now it's like any little detail that you can say so like you gotta walk on eggshells almost yeah so i i decided that i like to just talk about my art yeah i like to talk about why i'm doing it what's the purpose of it and i used to be very opinionated and love to give my opinion and be really like yeah i'm good and now it's like who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? Because I'm here to make films. I'm not yeah. here to I'm not a politician. I'm not a politician. Yeah. You know, so it's like, why are we gonna get into that? Or, you know, what does it matter? Like I the only reason why I'm ever even gonna get into talking about my past is to inspire people that are going through it in the present. And that's all. I but love that. That's it. So it's like that's the only reason why I would even get into something like that. But as far as my opinion goes, it doesn't matter. Because none of us really have exactly the same opinion. The only thing that matters is that we love to make movies and we love to talk about it and we inspire people through making movies. And that's all that really matters. Powerful. Awesome. I love it. That one's definitely... I agree. That one's definitely getting clipped. I was going to say that. I I try to whisper it, but I didn't want it to pop up in the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a fucking gem. Radio silence. I love it. No, thank you, Leslie. That's (laughs) amazing. Um, So what's your opinion on these... Waterloo's. Oh, they're great. I love them. Nobody cares about it. Really no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, these, are, these are really good. So we are um, 10% at check yeah. out. <laughs> I like Waterloo's. I mean, I like the, the little um, lime kickback that it has. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm digging it. So bad. if you use CJLA10 at checkout, you get a discount. Okay. No, you won't. All right. Not yet. Yeah. Waterloo sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not financial advice. All right. In in your opinion, what is the most important personality trait slash strength that someone needs to that needs in order to work in the industry or be successful in your role? Like, okay, let's say as let's let's let's, get, let's do two. 
as an actor, actress, and as a director, what are the most important traits in your eyes? Well, I actually got asked this in the last um, podcast I did, and I pretty much said which I agree with, and I think it's something you always have to agree with. One of the things is that you have to believe in yourself because you're the first person that will project that belief into the whole world. Yeah. You're like the number one fan of you. And if you don't believe in yourself, like how would you even begin to do anything in life? Yeah. It's like that's just anything. So your, your, your mind has to be on another level in order to accomplish great things essentially move mountains right because yeah. it's like this business you're moving mountains i mean let's get real it's yeah. it's it's rigorous and it's ruthless yeah so i that's that's the best i could say it's like you have to believe in yourself so then you can project that into the world and number two i would say is you have to be persistent um persistence is the key because if one thing knocks you down then everything else that's coming is going to knock you down you have to literally persist through everything so you can get to where you need to get to. And even when you get to where you need to get to, you have to persist to do more. Yeah, it's true. And you have to remind people constantly that you exist. Yeah. Because, because even if like you worked with them like a month ago, it just happens all so fast. And exactly. It, and so many faces and names that you just have to constantly be on that, really. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you feel like your personal like regimens, I guess, play a part in that as well? Because you, you have to believe in yourself, right? Well, yeah. in order, I know some people also have like morning routines or they have like, they meditate or they work out and use those sorts of things in order to build confidence to believe in themselves, whether it's on or offset. Do you have anything that you like to do? Affirmations, anything like that? Well, I, I like to watch a lot of movies yeah. because that inspires me all the time. Like any kind of movie, any kind of show. Um, even listen to music like sometimes I'm feeling some kind of way and I listen to a song and it just brings me up to that level that I really need to especially right before an audition if I'm going into an audition or a callback or whatever I listen to something and I have to like switch my mindset yeah with music or movies but I I mean you know it's so frowned upon to like watch tv but it's like how can you be a filmmaker if you don't watch movies mm -hmm. right how could you be a musician if you don't listen to music but it's that different breed that we are that a lot of people just don't understand. Or artists. All yeah. I watch is movies. I don't even watch TV. Literally. I, I just watch. I don't watch, watch TV either. I watch shows or movies. Yeah. That's is it. it. That, is that because you're watching through app? I'm watching on, on Netflix or anything, but like I don't like I don't watch the news. Yeah. You know? Like that's what I mean by I don't watch TV. Like I don't watch the news. Yeah. You know? You find out on social media. I don't even need to find out unless the world is ending. So I'm, yeah. I'm fine. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, I'm sure I'll find out, but it's like, if it's that important, it, 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 if, something, something will be exploding. Exactly. Next year. I'm yeah. going to find out about it, but it's just like, you know, I like to be inspired and the news doesn't inspire me. So yeah, I'm not going to watch the news, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's important too, right? Cause a lot of people talk about, okay, what am I adding to myself? But you also got to think about what am I blocking out? What's this things I have to block out to protect my energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, not hanging around with negative people, oh, yeah. not yet, et cetera. So I'm glad you brought that I up. I had to literally clean my space like a few months ago. Um, when I got in a lot of trouble, I was hanging out with a lot of bad people. Just not good. Yeah. And I feel like who you are is who you hang out with partially oh yeah because yeah. you know you could get influenced but you could also be like you're not going to influence me yeah. but when you have someone who's just not in a good mind space like mind space and they're bringing that into your space eventually mm -hmm. you're not going to have a good mind space either and that is toxic that's why misery loves company exactly mm -hmm. well you are the sum of the five people you hang out with most whether it's friends family or co-workers literally yeah and i didn't believe that until i experienced all the shit i got to experience well, it doesn't happen overnight you know you just take on little habits or thoughts or whatever over the course of you know months or years yeah you know it's not it's not like i meet someone i'm like oh he's a criminal i'm gonna go break into cars now it's like no it's just yeah. naturally so yeah. but um yeah definitely protect your energy it's very very For huge sure you have to what uh what or who has been your most important mentor if you have one i've had a lot um but you know i would have to say my parents mm. oh my parents were like the best people that i could have ever had in my life i mean they came from nothing 
Yeah. They had nothing. They brought me on a boat at the age of 26 and 25. They were kids and they said, we want a better life for you. And that's what they did. They provided a better life, but they gave me freedom, which is something that I wasn't born with. And it was one of the most important things that I could ever have in my life. And I literally owe everything to them and everything I could ever do is to pay back my parents for everything they ever taught me. Shout out Leslie's mom and dad, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Hey. I love that. Yeah. The Juvettes. Yeah. <laughs> How far does that lineage go up? Like Juvet? Yeah, like tell us a little bit about the family tree. Anything? Basically, my last name is only my family's last name. So if you're if your last name is Juvet, it's we're part of the family. Nobody else has that last name. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's a Google fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Like if you Google that name, nobody will come up but my family. It's crazy. That's unique. I love that. I don't yeah. And I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea. <laughs> who the past family members are. Yeah. And I think my dad told me one day he was visiting the the French islands or um, I forgot where he was. He was in the Caribbean and he was like, oh, George Juvet. And they brought him like to champagne and the special room. And they were like, oh, well, we're so glad you're here. And he was so confused. He was like, I didn't buy any of this stuff. They thought he was somebody yeah. from that was from that like family tree, but he was not, but it was the last name. And that's like as far as it goes. Did he get? To, did he get to keep the champagne? Or? He kept it. Okay, cool. Because it was part of the bloodline. <laughs> but he was like, I didn't buy this, so I never done the research. I've always wanted to do the research. I just also am like, what if these people were terrible people? You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to figure that out. You know, <laughs> what if they were like crazy people, <laughs> killed like a bunch of people? Who knows? Yeah. But I've been always really interested in knowing because that's it. yeah, we're the only ones in the. It sounds like you need a documentary about your life. I have a movie called 90 Miles, which is about my parents' life. It's about leaving Cuba and escaping communism. I love it. And we shot on film, which was cool. Naturally. Naturally, yeah. Everybody go check out the, the movie. Where can they find it? Mm. How, can, how can we watch it? So right now I'm doing film festivals, and I have like maybe five film festivals left. And the, the goal is to – I have a book. It's called 90 Miles. And um, the goal is to sell this to – the short film to like any networks – and if that doesn't happen, I mean, I wanted to do the short to make the feature film because I was like pitching and pitching and pitching and it just wasn't working out. And I guess just it's really hard to tell a story about something people don't want to know about mm. because it's a little scary. You know, communism and people think it could never happen to this country and whatever, but it's very easy. So it's hard to pitch that to people. It's a little bit like you're you're going into a room with a lot of like blind eyes, you could say. That's interesting to think about. So is it coming to any film festivals in L.A. still? Yeah. So I had the option of um, doing the um, Holly short. So they didn't pick it up, but they're having a screening um, every month. So I had the option of screening it with them. I just wanted to wait for Sundance and um, South by Southwest yeah. before I screen it. Because you know, once you screen it, then you can't really do those film festivals. So I was kind of like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that moment. And I obviously want to do a Miami International Film Festival because it's my whole family is there and I wanted them to watch it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to check that out. Did you, uh, let's see, you already talked about that. What are some obstacles that you've encountered um, switching i mean do you still constantly go back from actress to director or are you mainly focused on your directing role now i do both this whole year i was auditioning um and i was also focused on directing this pilot and i actually f was directing this feature film which kind of like got really crazy and chaotic talking about like it was a hard it was a hard set of people what can i say um and being a young director and being a female it's challenging because you have a lot of older men that might have been doing this for a long time and all of a sudden you're taking direction from this young person. It's like, who the fuck are you? You know, all like designed out or whatever. Or like, <laughs> I don't know, you know, you have a like a little, I like clothes. I love wearing, you know, it inspires me. It's one of those things I like, like dressing up. It inspires me. I forgot to say that. I love wearing something and like, just being edgy and it inspires me. 
But sometimes, oddly enough, that could be a trigger for some people. And yeah. I'm outspoken. I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm outspoken. <laughs> Clearly. It, yeah. It, it, is, it is true. We were asking her before the podcast, hey, you know, if there's anything you don't want to talk about, she's like, I don't give a fuck. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm so, outspoken. And, you know, it. sometimes, like, that people don't like that. Yeah. So I would say, you know, that would be an obstacle. But I think as far as acting goes, you know, once you're a director and you're just kind of like, I know what I want as an actor, you don't have that opportunity on set because I feel like you're more of an asset to someone's project. And it's a little different because you don't get as much freedom as you would like unless you're like the celebrity actor that everyone just obviously loves yeah. it's yeah. a little different when mm -hmm. you're just someone's asset to their project so you don't have as much creative freedom as if you were the director true so yeah. that's a little bit of a challenge there interesting we are switching into whoa, our whoa, whoa, hold on. Hot, hot, hot seat question. wait 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 hold on on the hot seat yes, that was a perfect segue into uh that one question that we had for directors oh uh, we kind of briefly went over it You're talking about for the the women and uh um, no or, outfits or, Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. do you, when you go direct the project, do you dress up and, or do you pick a specific outfit or is there a certain way you like to dress when you go direct? Absolutely. Let's hear it. I love just, I love dressing up all the time. I love. But specifically for directing, do yeah. you have yeah. a mindset? Like, yeah. do you pick certain clothes? Like, certain I have designers? to wear this one like hat. I have to, yeah, I have to yeah, wear my newest like, shit, pop the tag. And yes. I'm, yeah, like when I was directing this feature, I was wearing like Gucci and shit. And I think that that <laughs> looked probably like I was like, I don't know. It might have looked like I was a little bit like, uh, what's the word? I'm a little bougie. For? Bougie. <laughs> yeah. But really, I was just trying to be inspired. You know, like yeah. I love to wear good shit. I like to be decked out and just it inspires me. So I think in, like, nowadays everything, everyone is offended by whatever the case may be, you know? And I feel like even in your outfit, you can offend people, right? Oh, yeah. Even in your outfit, you offend people. So, yeah, I do like to dress a certain way. I mean, Christopher Nolan, I mean, when he was doing, I was looking at some pictures of him while he was directing. He's wearing a whole suit, like a whole suit, decked out in a suit. Why not? You know? So, yeah, I decked myself out. I was wearing my Gucci shoes, my Gucci hat, my... All Saints jacket. I just feel like it's it's battle plan. Let's go. Let's do it. That's amazing. Yeah. I, awesome. I, I can't say that I can because I know Cash. He he likes to, to yeah. pop, pop a couple tags. Oh yeah. When I direct, um um probably popping some cookies tags. Shout out cookies. That's why I have some another box. <laughs> um, the homies. Yeah, the homies over there. But yeah, I, I I like to, and I know I'm not operating, so I'll wear Jordans. So other than that, I don't like to wear Jordans. You guys see me. I'm in Nike or Under Armour dry fit shirts and gym shorts. <laughs> ready, ready, ready for anything. Ready for anything. I'm yeah. ready for anything. Me, so. I, my closet is full of set blacks and uh, comfortable shoes because I know I'll be on the feet all day. But I know Mason over there. I know Mason, you know, you come over here pulling up just, you know, dress normal like everybody else. But yesterday you're like, I'm directing. I got the all white <laughs> fit on. We had, my man's was out there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You got to represent. Yeah. You're like, you, you know, you're, good. you got to feel good. And if you, I feel like the outfit, how you dress is how you feel. Yeah. Right. Like if you look crazy and you're all like, uh, it's, you feel some sort of way that day. If you're all fucking decked out, you feel some sort of way, you know, True. it is what it is. So it's like when you're directing, it's like, <clears throat> you got to deck, decked out. I mean, you're the, you know star of the show in some regard so you definitely have to to look the part and act exactly. the part but yeah if it comes from within and, and i love that like it actually comes from within you though it's not like oh i'm trying to look cool for other people this like no i'm doing this for myself i'm yeah. doing it to inspire myself as well and that's amazing exactly definitely yeah, i agree All right. i think I think now we're ready to. Uh, Yo, here we oh, go. Shoot, we got, oh, you, guys no. a, you guys got a red light and everything oh, for this. Red light shit. is the hot sheet. It's the hot sheet. Okay. <laughs> Real quick, we'll just be answering a bu or asking a bunch of questions and uh, come up with the answer first thing that comes to mind. Let's get oh, it. so this is not one question. This is a several. It's just like Smoke a quick fire. Ball. Yeah, quick okay. fire. All right. You, you want to kick it off, Mike? Or do you have? I have it right here. Yeah, go for it. 
All right, so uh, first one, we're going to start it off. Horror movie or romance? Oh, horror movie. All right. Are you a red? Oh, shit. I love my red. Do you? I do. Interesting. I, do. I would say. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Go ahead. <laughs> film or digital? Oh, film. Oh, duh. duh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fruit snacks or gushers? And these are Welch's. Welch's fruit snacks. Gushers. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Let's go. 6 a.m. call or 6 p.m. call? Damn, that's a tricky one. 6 a.m. I'm going to finish early. Go home. Watch the Netflix. (laughs) Yep. I'm about that life, too. Let's go. Okay. L.A. or New York? Damn. L.A. I hate New York traffic. What about... This is a one-off. L.A. or ATL? L.A. Okay. L.A. or Miami? Oof. Sorry. I had Damn. to throw that in there. Um, Pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. Okay. Bet. Anamorphic or spherical lenses? Anamorphic. Love it. YouTube or Vimeo? YouTube. <laughs> All right. Uh, Crocs or Jordans? Jordans. <laughs> All right. Sparkling or tonic water? Sparkling. All right. Pizza. Water. No. <laughs> Water. Pizza or salad? Peaches. No, pizza. Oh, but pizza. <laughs> or duh. salad. P- pizza. Pizza? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Why would I eat a salad, bro? <laughs> you think I could direct with that all day? <laughs> all right. Um, business suit or gym suit? Business. Mm. Okay. Big production or small production? Uh, big production. Yeah. Yeah, because then we could do whatever we want. I didn't say big budget. Yeah. Big production or small. But no. that's such a that's such a spear, though, because it could be like big production, uh, eight episodes, small production, short film. Like, I don't you know, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean? Exactly. That's true. I think I think it just meant more like, yeah, yeah small big, budget, but big yeah, budget. Yeah. Uh, duh. Who would pick a small budget? I mean, depends. If you're I with mean, the, if you're with your crew, as opposed to working with people. Well, you yeah. If you get, okay, well, you didn't say that. You didn't I give know, me if just, you if you <laughs> give me if you give me limitations to each question, then that'll change that. This is that'll a terrible hot seat. Take that one another. <laughs> Keep the gusher one though. All right. Tag it or bag it. Tag it or bag it. Yeah, it's just. Simple one. Bag it. <laughs> Black coffee or cream and sugar? Cream and sugar all, all right. the way. Why? I mean. Because gotta... black coffee tastes like shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mustard or mayo? I love mayo. <laughs> Fucking so good. <laughs> love mayo. Ranch or ketchup? Mm, depends on the ranch because there's that buttery ranch and that shit is bomb. And then there's like. That ketchup that's not organic, that should taste bad. So mm-hmm. it depends. Okay. Uh, art or creativity? That's a really, um, it, they're both creative. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I had, like, if, 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 like, physical, I was born. Physical or, or a vision? Like, well, right obviously in. we're a filmmaker, so I would have to say creative. Like, that's okay. how we work, you know. What about rate or budget? rate or budget yeah your rate or the pro- or the project budget like, more important. at this point yeah. it's my rate because <laughs> i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> at this point i'm not doing that shit anymore all right real quick we're going to true or false real quick true or false a full day is 10 hours mm, that's false okay true what, or false well what is a full day 12 <laughs> we had different yeah. It, 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 some people it's think it's good. eight. Yeah. Some people think it's ten. Uh, I mean, there was just, um, there was just the, what happened a few months ago where there was like that whole. Um, oh yeah, they just had a strike. They had the strike. Yeah. So I mean, unless it changed, it was twelve hours. Yeah. Did it I'm, change? It well, used to be crazier. I, I mean, think it's ten, uh, maybe officially, maybe I don't know. Depends it on should be. Ask. It should be ten. Yeah. It okay. should be eight. It's yeah. uh, supposed to be eight. You but we'll never at, get anything yeah. done. So <laughs> <laughs> That is true. Uh, Next question. True or false, pizza for lunch and pizza for second lunch is perfectly okay. False. Okay. But, you, some, but you did just pick pizza over salad. So. Yeah, some, yeah, but I mean, what's well, going to give me like good energy? Like, if, does the salad have chicken in it? Like, I know. Well, <laughs> Somebody well, opened any questions. You know. Uh, true or false, martini shots are alcoholic. 
Martini shots? Yeah. True. Yeah, they are. But what if it's the martini shot of the film, though? Oh. I guess it could include. I mean, it depends what question you're asking me. <laughs> These are trick questions. True or false? It does not take a village. That's false as fuck. Mm. We'd all agree on that. We were just talking yeah. about that, like, how you know, it takes a whole village. So, true or false, one more for safety always means one more take. Of course. True. Does it happen being like that? Does it what? Does it happen to be like that, though? All the time? Yeah. Like, I mean, it depends. That, Sometimes that, the cinematographer is like, yo, the lighting, I, you know, it really depends. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds like, yo, that was terrible sound. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess that's false. Exactly. Uh, true or false? Being. S- I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. True, last, one. last one. True or false? Pulling sharps can get you cut. What? Pulling sharps can get you cut. Uh, no, false, because that's pulling focus. So, Wait, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, here we that's go. It for the hot seat, you got that more. Hot seat. No, I'm moving on to the looking ahead segment here, and then we're gonna be moving on to our last looks. We're about on the last end of our podcast here. Um, but we want to look ahead to the future a little bit more. Uh, okay. we, ca- we talked a lot about the past, how you got here, uh, how the industry's changed, et cetera. Um, but now we briefly talked about, okay, now we got TikTok, all this other, other sort of stuff. How does a director keep up with the surge of short form content, right? Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're going into projects now and they say, okay, we want to do all this stuff, but now it's for 15 seconds instead of a 45 short or, or feature film, how do you handle that? I kindly deny it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like doing uh, social content? Um, I have my own social content for the sake of acting, but if I had to choose, I would obviously say that I'm more of like a feature film, television, directing kind of artist as opposed to like 15 seconds because I'm just not, it's not my forte. Yeah. You know, if it was my forte, I would do it, but it's just not. So I would just not even get into that. Yeah, because I know um, I've been on a couple of projects and they were for like uh, like skincare products and stuff like that. And they had brought out like flown out doctors and they had stunt teams and green screens and studios and spent a bunch of money on it. But yeah, it was literally for like three pieces of TikTok content, which is a 15 second ad that you scroll yeah. through. And, you know, that's important that they do that because that they're keeping up with uh, the times. Yeah. But I guess that's more of a commercial land. I guess when it comes to feature feature film world. um, you're always going to kind of do more long form. If I had to do it, I would do it, obviously, if it was something that I had to do. But if I don't, just do what I love. I mean, music videos I'm super down with because you can have some really creative music videos. So I would I would obviously never say no to that. Yeah. Have you done music videos? Um, I'm supposed to do one. And uh, like, <laughs> I was supposed to do one like in next month. Oh, OK. One's coming yeah. up. Nice. I okay. was supposed to, yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. If Direct- that's your first on one? Film. Oh, I did a couple that were just a little bit like, I wouldn't, I don't consider them. I wouldn't consider it. Okay. Unless it's like a big production. I'm not, con- not big, but like yeah, I something you. I want to show. Yeah. I wouldn't consider yeah. it. Yeah. Amazing. We're not Googling anything. You could Google it. It won't come out. <laughs> I, am not- I make sure nothing comes out that looks like shit. <laughs> I'm not liable for what happens behind the producer station. So we're going to move on to the next part. Uh, do you um, do you like to post your finished work? Do you like to post your personal life? Do you like to post educational content or all of the above? Um, well, you know, I would say all of the above until I was posting my personal life and that backfired a little bit. But gotcha. I, I was doing the personal life thing and. It just was like not. Nah, yeah, I, I don't, don't like to. No, it got it's just really... like what we were talking about earlier, being private. Mm-hmm. I don't really like to share my private life with the whole world. I'll share what I want to share with you, yeah. uh, the whole world. But uh, you know, it's it's just keeping a barrier. Yeah. Um, I got kids, got a fiance, so. Yeah, we talked about that actually. Um, I feel like. Privacy is key and it saves your relationship. Um, I think we were posting a lot and it just kind of like interrupted with the privacy and a lot of people were just really involved. And um, we made a mistake because we had actually done a photo shoot with an influencer Mm. and that was like too much, too much. And then it became really, really 
out there. Yeah. We started getting all these followers, and then we got kind of targeted as a specific couple. And then I don't know. We should have never. We should have never done it. So I would say no. Yeah, that that's crazy. That's yeah, that's, that's crazy to think about. Um, do you film BTS yourself when you're on set, or do you just like to leave that up to a BTS person? I do some. You know, sometimes there's a shot I want to take. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I'll do some. I do see uh, you and Jackie posing for some for some fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's we're having a good time, right? So it's like we got to get those moments. Definitely. They matter. <clears throat> and do you do you like to edit your BTS or you just kind of like here's a little quick clip and and, and I think post it's it? Like quick clip and yeah. you know, I'm not that creative with it. That's why I'm not that good at TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, TikTok's a wild space. Man. It's, it's, it has so many options. I'm like, yeah, I don't know why the people can do this all day. It's like, it's crazy. You better get paid for it because it's a it's a full time job. Yeah, right. It definitely is. Shout out to all those content creators out there because keeping up with the polls, man. Yeah, shout out to you guys. It's 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 a hard one. <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, Jackie, tell us, um, like, who do you work with now? Like, what are you? Like, I work are you with, affiliated with. Like, I uh, work with Creative Garibenas. Um, collaboration, we collaborate. I mean, obviously we all have our own individual projects going on, but as much as we can, we like to collaborate with each other because we work really well together. Yeah, I love that. I love um, it. It's like the junkies. Yeah, it's just like you guys. It's, it's a group of women from the Caribbean. We all come together as much as we can when there's a project on the line and collaborate because we just found that when you have a, a group that's so passionate about certain kind of stories it's better off pushing it together than alone. And we work, we work really well together. We have fun, no <laughs> drama. Yeah. You have any uh, fun upcoming stuff you wanna maybe tell the world a little bit about? There's a few things coming up. There's a potential feature film coming up next year, um, which I can't really talk too much about, but that is there on the table. The um, editing of the pilot, which is looking really, really good. I mean, it's phenomenal. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait to show I you guys. Really, yeah, I, I can't wait to show you guys. It looks really good. So, you know, there's that. There's been a lot of close things for acting. And there's a project I'm doing next week, which I'm flying out for. It's more of like a photo shoot. And I'm doing that. I'm going to St. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri next week for that. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Bring me back some barbecue, please. Is that what it is out there? Yeah. Is the barbecue joint? Right? Isn't, isn't St. Louis know. known for their, their barbecue? Or am um, I tripping? Is it the middle? Is it, I, I was, might be tripping. Uh, I thought that was Midwest. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> might just throwing what, out BS what is, again. What is what is Missouri known for? I'm I'm curious now. Um, they're known for like, <laughs> what is it? St. Louis got ribs. Two, ribs. See? Oh, I got to go out there and get some ribs. Yeah, let me know the ribs. Did you are. say ribs? I said barbecue. You said barbecue. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you What do you normally do with the ribs? <laughs> anyway, um. So we're kind of at the final part of our uh, podcast here. So oh, let's let's so let's, let's leave. <laughs> I know we both so have, we'll have to have a part two, maybe uh, a special episode with you and Jackie or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. But we want to leave it on a inspirational note. Okay. What is uh, a piece of advice? Like, what's something we we talked about? Okay, believe in yourself. All these good notes for just kind of generality, but I mean, what's someone like your younger self or someone that's kind of in your position or they're thinking about doing what you're doing. What is a piece of advice you can truly give them? Cause I know there might be someone watching this video that is that person. What yeah. would you say to that person? I would have to say I'm probably a really strong believer in not listening to anybody other than yourself. It's one of the most important things you have to do in this business or in any business where you really have to just take some kind of strength I feel like we're all in this way tailored to listen since you're a kid. You have to tailor, tailor to listen to your mother, your father, your grandmother, your great-grandfather, and all they can give you is their own experiences. Mm -hmm. But they'll never have the experiences that you will live. They won't have that because by the laws of life, you know, everyone just has their time. They die or whatever. So as far as listening to other people's advice, it's like you can't really do that because they don't really know the life that you're going to live. Yeah. So there is nobody's advice that you should be listening to but yourself. Because the only thing you're going to get from listening to their advice is all the experiences that they ever had to live. And what is life if it's not experience it? The life that you have to experience. 
Yeah. And things change so quickly too. I mean, we were just talking about this yesterday about like things that happened six years ago felt so long ago, but the world changes so quickly Yeah, that uh, you just have to kind of flow like water. Yeah. And it's like the world changes, times change. So whatever your great grandfather lived is not going to be the same thing that you live. It's just not, it's, you can listen to whatever they have to say, but as far as taking on that piece of information and living your life that way, I don't think it's something that's beneficial to anybody especially when you're in such a different field being an artist is not the same as being an accountant oh man it's not so yeah. why would you listen to your grandfather who was an accountant when you're an artist in yeah. fact our world is so like frowned upon it's like the first thing they tell you is don't be an artist or don't do that you're not going to make enough money but who is to say what is important in life is it money or is it happiness yeah and what is happiness Money. Well, it depends. No, <laughs> what is happiness? <laughs> Money. <laughs> it's all full circle. A million dollars. That's interesting, though, too, though. I feel like it was also shamed back in the day because it was a lot harder to make money as well because there were so many gatekeepers. If you wanted to be the next Michael Jackson or Prince, you, you had to go through that record label. Nowadays, right. you know, we have people that come up through getting noticed through SoundCloud. So, so SoundCloud, social media, posting all these other things, and, like, like, Russ, for example, he's a pretty big independent uh, artist. Um, so I think now it's way more tangible mm -hmm. for this for this generation and people that live in today's world to be a successful artist yeah. or to be successful creative. And, you know, like most of us, we didn't just all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to quit my job and go be this now 100%. Like we eased into it. At least I know I did where, okay, I'm still working two bartending jobs and doing film on the weekend and, and doing what I could. And then once I was ready to make that jump, this is kind of what it turned into. Yeah. So, and it's going back to believing in yourself. Yeah. You have to believe in yourself yeah. because what if you really didn't believe that you could do it? Would you have done it? Yeah. You know, it was scary. Still scary, but whatever, but yeah. you believe that you could do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, you I'm going to do it. You know, I'm doing it and this is what's going to happen. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much the best advice I could give is like, just don't listen to anybody but yourself. I love it. Any other notes from our podcast or sorry, our producer station? Mm, no. Where Last can looks. we, where can we find you? Last looks. You can find me on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Not much though. Instagram. Find me outside. <laughs> Catch me outside. Yeah. Um, Instagram, TikTok. Um, all, all Leslie Louvet. Uh, Leslie Juve, yeah. The only I one. Told the one and only. Juve. Juve. Sorry. Juve. You could, the Latin version is Juve. The French version is Louvet. See, I was doing more. Yeah. The, I was doing, doing more the French You were yeah. doing a combination. I'm just gonna call you Leslie. <laughs> okay, but me. find her in all the socials. <laughs> yeah, go read the book. Go check out all of the stuff. Uh, again, anything listed here, we'll put it in the description. Also, check out the IMDb as well. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Leslie, for being Thank on the you show. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, Leslie. Was a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. it was fun. And don't forget to join the Discord, y'all. Subscribe here on the YouTube. Uh, follow on the Twitch. All that good stuff. Outside of that, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Bye. Fun times. Mm -hmm.